All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our spotlight series today. I'm highlighting our industrial and systems engineering uh, program master's programs. Uh, my name is Erin Tanaka and I represent the Viterbi admission and student engagement office. And then I also have with me here today, David Ho, who is the director of the industrial systems engineering department um, and student services. Um, and so I am happy to have him on here to share his expertise and um, we're going to just jump right into the session. And then for those of you that are joining us by recording, just so you know, um, you know, this session is as of April 13th, 2023. So if um, if you're watching this uh, recording later on, just keep that in mind. You'll always want to make sure that you refer to our website and the links provided for the most up to date information. Um, so definitely make sure to do that. All right, so just a couple quick notes before we get started. So you will receive, if you are live on this, uh, during this presentation, welcome. Uh, you will receive a follow-up email from my team within a couple of business days, and that will include um, a copy of today's presentation within that email. Um, so no need to jot down the links unless you need them right away. And then throughout the session, if you have any, think of any questions, feel free to use the Q&A panel to the right of the session. And um, we will actually be holding off on those questions during the Q&A portion of the session, uh, but rest assured you will have your questions answered um, during the session. So for today's program, I will start out by talking, um, give a brief overview of the University of Southern California's Viterbi School of Engineering. I'll talk about our, um, then we'll talk, talk about our master's programs, in industrial and systems engineering, and get insight from David. Um, we'll go over some frequently asked questions that we get from students, and then we'll, I will discuss the delivery method and methods and enrollment options that we have available. And then at the end of the session, as I mentioned before, um, we will have have, you'll have an opportunity to ask any questions that you have that weren't answered during the session. So a little bit about the University of Southern California, for those of you that haven't joined us for a session in the past. Um, so we are the oldest private university in the Western United States. Um, we actually were founded way back in 1880. Um, currently, our student population is almost at 50,000 there. Um, you can see our graduate student numbers actually outnumbers our undergraduate student population, which many find surprising there. Um, we have over 4,700 full-time faculty members. Um, that doesn't include many of the adjunct faculty that come from a variety of different industries and really bring the expertise to the field um, from the field to the classroom. Um, we're a very diverse student population, so we have students from all over the nation, all over the world, all different types of walk, walks of life, so um, you would be in very great company with people from all different types of backgrounds. And um, we are located in Los Angeles. So for those of you that might not be in the California or even Southern California area, we're about a, a 10 to 15 minute drive from the downtown Los Angeles area. Um, and about a 45 minute drive always depends on traffic, of course, in LA from the Silicon Beach area. So we're really surrounded by lots of opportunities, whether it is jobs, internships, um, entertainment, the arts, you name it. Um, we are really in the middle of all the action here in Los Angeles. So now in terms of the Viterbi School of Engineering, so we are one of the largest and oldest um, academic schools within the larger U University of Southern California environment. Um, we are comprised of eight academic departments, one of them being our um, Department of Industrial Systems Engineering and um, Industrial Systems Engineering, which will, um, David will talk a little bit more about um, in a few slides. Um, in terms of our faculty members, we have 189 tenure track faculty. We have 35 National Academy of Engineering members, which is one of the um, greatest honors you can receive as an engineer. And we have our 90 National Science Foundation Career National and Presidential Young Investigator awardees. Um, in terms of our student population for the Viterbi School alone, um, as you can see there, our graduate student population um, is essentially double that, more than double that of our undergraduate student population. And so that number includes our master's degree students, both online and on campus, and our PhD students, as well as our graduate certificate students. Um, and then we are a leader in funder research, so we have lots of exciting research going on at any given point. Um, 
some of which, of course, would um, be through the industrial systems engineering department. Uh, but we have over 35 research centers um, and conducting, you know, research in all different areas. So if you're interested in finding out more about research areas, we encourage you to visit our Viterbi School website, you know, for more insight into those different research areas. But now I have the pleasure to um, introduce you all to David Ho. He's our Director of Student Services for the Daniel J. Epstein Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. Um, he's worked at USC for over eight years, so he has great residential knowledge, not only of um, the Turby School and Industrial Systems Engineering, but the larger USC campus. Um, and he also earned his um, Master Science degree in counseling. So he's got um, fantastic expertise and work Working with students and and helping them out um, throughout their 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 um, careers as students. So with that being said, I'll, I'll hand it over to David um, and to give a department overview. David, take it away. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for the introduction and welcome everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to give you lay of the land for the ISC department. Uh, so just a brief department overview. We were the first named department in the Viterbi School of Engineering, and um, that's through a generous contribution through our endowment uh, faculty. His name is Daniel J. Epstein. He, we are the second named ISC department in the nation. Uh, as far as faculty members go, we have 19 tenured or tenured track faculty members with primary appointments. We have eight teaching faculty members, three research faculty members, we have joint appointments, which means they are housed our faculty between ISC and a different department, uh, usually primarily in Viterbi. And then we have seven courtesy faculty appointments. So enrollment and research centers, uh, our current enrollment numbers for our department, we have approximately 200 undergraduate students. We have approximately 850 master students, and that's spread apart among six primary programs and then dual degree programs. And then we have approximately 50 PhD students. Our research centers consist of METRANS, CREATE National Center for Risk and Economic Analysis of Terrorism, USC Meta Center for Research and Education in AI and Learning, uh, Information Sciences Institute in Marina Del Rey, Center for Advanced Manufacturing, and Center for AI and Society. Right. So, so one, one of the questions, questions we get. Yeah. Go ahead. Actually, I'll ask the question. You can answer. No worries. Um, so what master's degrees and grad certificate programs are available within um, the Industrial Systems Engineering Department? Yeah, so as stated before, we have six primary master's programs in our department, and then you see the dual degree programs before, um, actually at the bottom. One of the things I want to pay close attention to is the computer icon. Basically, that means available online via distance education network, then at Viterbi. So you're allowed to take this program online. Currently, the two programs that don't allow this and you know, I think we will in the future are the analytics program and then the dual degree program at the bottom, but primarily the analytics program. We realize it consists of over half of our population at the master's level. So we are working towards moving that to then, but for right now, um, all of our other programs are offered through then and on campus, but analytics is currently just on campus. And so the first program we're going to talk about is the analytics program. And so it is currently a minimum 30 unit degree program. There are four required courses that you see on the left. And then essentially you have three courses to select from group A and group B. So that's going to consist of nine units, nine plus 12 equals 21 units. And then the remaining nine units come from the elective category. If you look in the lower left hand bottom, and we work with you on that. So we typically, you know, typically students will come to us and say, hey, like I work in this industry or I want to learn more about this aspect of analytics. And again, we typically will work with them. But we're fairly liberal on electives that they can select from. All right, engineering management. So it's a minimum 30 unit degree. 
and what you see is the required coursework of those first four courses. Um, you are currently required to take an analytics and a technology elective. And then the remaining courses on the next slide are basically you can actually choose between a different track and you can select courses from each track. Most students select the custom track on the right hand side of the of the um, the presentation and essentially it's kind of like a mishmash of courses from different tracks and that's perfectly fine. Um, most students typically take Marshall School of Business courses and again that's perfectly acceptable. So again they get that ISE coursework with the Marshall School of Business coursework uh, but again you're more than welcome to take ISE coursework as well. And these are the dual degree programs that are offered with the engineering management degree. Most of these programs uh, are 48 units. So the aerospace engineering plus the engineering management, mechanical engineering plus engineering management, uh, electrical engineering plus engineering management, and then the petroleum plus engineering management. Um, as far as the requirements for the other degrees, most of what it consists of is 18 units in engineering management, and then a certain amount of electives within the engineering management. And again, we're gonna be fairly liberal with you on that. So if you're an aerospace engineering, engineering management student, and you wanted to take more aerospace classes in those elective units, that's perfectly fine. If you wanna take Marshall School of Business courses, again, that's fine as well. But there are certain courses that you have to take in the engineering management program that you can't get around. Uh, those are required courses. And then again, we'll, we'll work with you on which electives to select from. Our next program is the Health Systems Management Engineering Program. This is a 31 unit minimum program. The required coursework are those five courses that you see there. Again, they're kind of a mishmash between our department. PM is preventive medicine. PPD is public policy. And so, again, you kind of take courses within different departments. We have an agreement with all these departments that our students take these courses. Um, and then the remaining electives, again, you choose from topics that you're interested in. So, again, whether they're preventive medicine, ISC, or PPD. All right, industrial and systems engineering, minimum of 30 units. The required coursework for courses that you see there, 513, 514, 515, and 583. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see that you'll have to take one course from each of those groups. Uh, so you just select one of the elective options there. So that's gonna total nine units plus the 12 units of required coursework. And then if you jump back to the left-hand corner where it says electives, that's the nine units that you need to complete the degree. And again, we're going to be liberal here. You take courses that are, you're interested in um, with advisor approval. Okay, MSN Operations Research Engineering is a minimum of 30 units. So the required courses you see on the left hand side, ISC 532 is actually now ISC 632. And then you basically take um, four courses because one of those courses is uh, not offered anymore, the 582 course. Uh, and then you actually essentially get to select from remaining electives approved by the department. Product development engineering. So this is gonna look really confusing, uh, but basically the minimum of the 27 units, you have to take the two core courses, ISC 501, ISC 545. Then this program breaks off into two different tracks. So depending on if you want the product development technology track or the product development systems track, you kind of go from there. So if you take the product development tr technology track, you take the two AME courses and then primary, primarily AME electives to finish out the program. But if you take the product development systems track on the right hand side of the page, you take the ISC 515 and 544, and then you basically choose from ISC electives 
um, for the remaining coursework, and that includes the electives. And the program director for this program is very, very fair when it comes to which courses. We have courses that students take from Marshall School of Business. Uh, we've even had cinema courses approved. So again, we really do kind of curtail it to what you're interested in. All right, so the Industrial and Systems Engineering MBA dual degree program is actually the biggest program, uh, 66 units, a minimum of 18 units from ISC, and then the remaining courses come from the Marshall School of Business. So the two required courses you see there, 514 and 515, and then essentially you just choose from a remaining group of electives from systems design, information systems, quantitative method, and then, you know, just an additional course. But essentially, students that get admitted to dual degree programs have to be admitted to both departments individually. And then once they're admitted individually, their postcode or major is open. And then once we combine their dual degree, we eliminate the individual postcodes. We give them the joint dual degree postcode and then you're free. It, it actually benefits you because obviously you get two degrees from both departments and you don't have to fulfill all the requirements for the individual degrees. Where are your alumni? Oh, sorry. That's okay. You could go ahead and just answer those. Yeah. So, okay. like, where are your alumni working and what job opportunities are available um, for students or, or graduates? So on the next slide, you'll see where our students work. And they should all look fairly familiar to you. I don't really have to name all of them, but uh, essentially these are where the majority of our students work. Um, one thing I do wanna mention, so all the programs that we ran through, this is the current iteration of our program. Um, we are under potentially a new curriculum that may be introduced um, for the new fall 2023 term, which none of them have been confirmed with by USC hierarchy. But um, again, this was the current iteration of all the programs. So uh, again, we will, we'll let you know if, uh, if and when they do get approved. Sounds good, yes. And, you know, I, just to reiterate to, you know, any, of the content that we shared today, you know, you always want to make sure that you just, um, uh, you know, uh, reference the, um, the Fraternity Graduate Admission website um, for, for prospective students, just because that's always going to have what's live um, in terms of the curriculum. Um, and so, uh, yes, so for those of you online right live right now, you know, it ex exists as of today, but if you're watching this recording um, any time later, you'll definitely want to always make sure that you're referencing those links. So thanks so much, David. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and now answer some of these questions too. So um, first is, you know, can I pursue a master's degree or graduate certificate completely online on a part-time basis? So the answer is yes. So as David mentioned, um, essentially the large majority of the um, master's and dual degree programs are um, available online, Vedana Viterbi. Um, so these are the ones that are absolutely doable and can be completed 100% online if you'd wish. Um, but I'm going to go over, you know, just what, how our Vedana Viterbi delivery method works. Um, but first and foremost, just kind of wanted to distinguish. So we have two, you know, main uh, methods of course delivery. So of course we have, you know, on-campus students that want to be in person. Um, typically they go full time, but you know, we have those that are on campus that may not be completely full time necessarily. Um, so usually they're taking anywhere from two to three classes, sometimes even four, depending on the their course load. Um, and usually um, take around one and a half to two years to complete. Their degree. Um, in terms of online Dena Viterbi students, um, because the large majority of our online students are working full time, they tend to take one or two courses per semester. But it's flexible, you know, um, based off of you know whether they're working professionals or not. You don't have to be a working professional to be an online student. So there are some students that may be just in a location that's outside of Los Angeles and wanting to pursue their program full time online. That's possible too. Um, but in generally speaking, you know, on average, our done 
we call them den students, our den online students graduate about two and a half to three years. But again, you know, there's flexibility there as long as you're graduating within five years um, and you can even petition for additional two years if needed. So in terms of how Den of Viterbi works, so we know that there's lots of different online delivery methods out there. And so we do want to distinguish that, you know, Den of Viterbi is really unique. It's its own proprietary web-based delivery system that is unique to the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. So even other academic schools within USC have different online systems. Um, but essentially the way that it works is our Den of Viterbi online students are in the same exact um, classes as the and same exact program as the on campus students. So essentially, you get three. You could have three options for how you watch the lectures. You can watch them lec the lectures live as they're happening on USC's campus. Nice thing about that is you can call in during the live session. You can chat your questions um, if you have any questions and get those answered on the spot during the live lecture. Um, but we also recognize that you know things come up. You might have work. Um, work conflicting obligations or personal obligations. And so each of the recordings, uh, or sorry, the live lectures are recorded. It then goes into the course recordings archive that is available after the live session takes place until the end of the semester when they are then taken down after um, the semester is over. Uh, but it's a great setting tool as well. So, you know, if you need to watch the lectures on your own time and have that as a setting tool, it's a great option um, as a Den of Viterbi student. And then finally, although it is not required to step foot on USC's campus, you are welcome to come to campus. You would have a seat in the classroom as a Den student. You have the ability to enjoy all the, the resources on campus that on campus students have as well. Um, we also, you'd also have access to a number of Den of Turby specific resources, including um, the Den control team, network support team that is really there to support our students, whether they have technical issues, making sure that the camera angles look great and you can hear the lectures, that students can hear you when you call in. Um, and so we have lots of support um, for our DEN students in addition. Um, but like I said, you don't have to come to campus at all. If, if you don't want to step foot on campus, you don't have to. Um, but in terms of the way that it works for DEN students, so I'm going to talk a little bit about these things on the next slide, but just some things to just to just reiterate is that, you know, um, again, you know, our online students are in the same classes as the on campus students. So they're having the same lectures. They have the same faculty members, same homework ex and exams as well. Um, in terms of exams, the way that it works is that if an exam is required to be proctored in person or on site, um, you would need to take your exams um, in the lot. If you're in the Los Angeles, Orange or Ventura counties um, within California, you would take your exams on USC's campus. Um, if you're outside of those areas, you can to take your exams at a designated location that works best for where you're either uh, working or at home. Um, those often can be a local library, community college, local university, a corporate site if there's somebody um, that works for your company that is willing to proctor examinations, that's also possible as well. Um, we have a dedicated Den of Viterbi exams coordinator that would can help assist with um, scheduling and um, even if you have required work travel, for example, and let her know at least a couple of weeks in advance, um, she can as assist with finding, helping to find um, or providing resources for other locations so that you're taking your exams as close to the time it takes place on USC's campus as possible. So this gives you a side by side comparison. Um, you might be, you know, undecided as to whether you're planning to be an, a DEN online student versus on campus student. Um, so program admission and require application and required materials are exactly the same. So you're applying for a degree program, not a delivery method, though you would indicate whether or not you're interested in pursuing your program online or not. Um, the weekly, again, weekly course lectures, exams, homework assignments, all the same, just depends on, um, you know, where you would take your exams in terms of the assignments. You know, at this point, um, large majority of students, both online and campus, um, submit their their homework assignments electronically via the course course management system and according to the same course deadlines. Um, the exams again, um, so. It depends on where you're located. Courses per semester, we talked about degree completion requirements, 27 to 37 units with a 3.0 GPA or above. 
Um, and there's absolutely no distinction on your diploma, whether you're an online versus an on campus student. Um, you're earning the same exact degree, same exact diploma. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, that distinction. So just some additional things for our Denver Viterbi students. So we also, in addition to applying, being able to apply for formal admission to, of course, any of our um, master's or grad certificate programs, we also offer what's called limited status enrollment. Essentially, this is a way to potentially get a jump start on taking courses or a course as early as this coming summer term, um, which starts as early as May. And um, but in order to be eligible, you do have to have have an undergrad degree in engineering, math, hard science, or a related field to the degree program you're planning to later on pursue, potentially. Um, it must be from a regionally accredited institution, and you have to have a 3.0 cumulative GPA or above on a 4.0 scale. Um, and it's limited status in the sense that um, there's a maximum of 12 units you can take. Um, but if you later on decide that you would like to um, pursue a full graduate certificate or master's degree program, you do still have to formally apply for admission separately. Um, and just note that, you know, limited status doesn't guarantee that you'll be formally admitted. However, if you are formally admitted um, and took courses that are required for a deg particular degree program that you're formally admitted into, then those courses that you took as a limited status student can be um, applied to um, your master's or grad certificate student um, with departmental approval, as long as, again, um, they are required courses for the program or relevant courses. Um, and to get started, it's a pretty quick process. You just complete what's called the Denim profile and um, you would receive um, a response from our student affairs team within typically three to five business days as to whether or not you are approved to enroll. And um, if you are approved, then you can, again, start as early as the summer, which just as a note is, um, is a much shorter um, term compared to the fall and spring. So fall and spring is um, generally 15 to 16 weeks, um, whereas the summer term is can be as short as six weeks or 12 weeks. Um, so it just depends. But sometimes you will like the fast pace of the summer. Um, but just keep that in mind because you'll definitely want to stay up to speed with your courses if you if you take summer courses. Um, and in addition, so we do have what's called, um, for those of you that are working professionals, um, we do have a Jennifer Turby scholarship, um, which I can share separately, but we also offer what's called employer deferment, reimbursement deferment um, program. Essentially, it's a way to defer your upfront payment of your tuition of, of up to 90% um, until after the semester is over. So rather than having to pay out of pocket in advance of the term, you can defer that, um, but you do have to be, um, your employer does need to reimburse you for tuition at the end of each term and your account student account needs to be current and then you can see um, the program participation requirements as well as the link to more information if that if that pertains to you so another question is you know i decided to apply for formal mission any tips on getting started so just first and foremost you'll definitely want to make sure that you confirm the application deadlines and you know what is posted on the website um there is an asterisk there um for um those of you that may be um interested in pursuing your program as online Jenna Viterbi students um so for example for fall 2023 um we have officially extended the application deadline to May 31st but this is only for those who um, are planning to pursue their program in its entirety as Denim Viterbi applicants. Um, and it is for those that do not require any student visa sponsorship. Or so no, um, if you require an F1 student visa or an I-20, you definitely need to make sure that you apply as an on-campus student. Um, and this de this extended deadline, unfortunately, would, wouldn't pertain to you um, just because we need to be able to process um, any visa, you know, um, visa sponsorship requests as early as possible. Possible. Um, but if that is too soon for you. So fall 2023 starts in August of, um, of this year. But if that's too soon for you, spring 2024 is the next application deadline. That's going to be in January. That will start January of next year. And the deadline to submit all required materials is September 15th. If you would like to be considered for scholarship consideration, then you do need to um, absolutely need to um, apply by that date as an on-campus student. For Jenna Viterbi student, um, 
are interested students. Um, it's a little bit different. We do have more flexibility um, because we also have separate a scholarship consideration, um, which where is a separate application. Um, but essentially, if you are planning to pursue your program as an online Denver Turby student and get close to a deadline, just um, always feel free to reach out to denvaturby.usc.edu, which goes to myself and, and my colleague, Marilyn Lau. And um, we are happy to work with you if you need additional time on a case by case basis as well. All right, so the, the next step you'll want to make sure to do is review the application required. Um, criteria. So, um, this will vary based off of the individual program. And again, you're always going to want to make sure you refer to the website for the latest details. Um, but generally speaking, you know, the, the program materials, I'm um, say pretty consistent, um, for the most part, but always make sure that you refer to the specific program pages for the, um, specific details on that. Um, so to get started, um, you will. For those of you that are interested in um, pursuing the program as an on campus student, um, we are, you know, we encourage you to visit campus. Um, there's a number of different events that we host um, throughout the year for um, prospective students as well as newly admitted students. Um, but if you can't get to campus, whether you're planning to pursue your program online or on campus, um, we do encourage you to do um, one of our virtual tours of the campus, which is pretty cool and high tech there. Um, and then you can start um, your application for formal admission. Um, the steps to how to apply are pretty similar for both our on-campus and online students. Um, they're essentially the same application. So um, really the only difference is, you know, again, uh, indicating whether or not you're planning to pursue your program online or on campus. And then for Denver Turby students, if you are also interested in starting as a limited status student as early as summer 2023, again, um, you can uh, visit our website and complete the Denver Turby profile to determine whether or not you're approved as early as possible. Okay, so now you all have the opportunity to ask any questions um, that you have for either David or me. So um, don't be shy, go ahead and um, add those questions to the Q&A panel and we will get to those. Um, but I do have some questions that um, we also get um, you know, quite often. Um, so just one of the questions we get, David, is you know, can I pursue, um, or is, is a master's degree required, um, sorry, sorry, not, not master degree, master's thesis required for um, any of our master's degree programs? No, absolutely not. It's an, it's an option. Uh, and I can tell you specifically in our program right now, we have one student doing thesis and that's out of 870 students. So definitely not required, but an option. Gotcha. And I mean, if if somebody were to really want to do a master's thesis, how would that work? So, if students would want to pursue master's thesis, there are two usually semesters that the usually in their last year of the program that they would have to take the thesis. They would have to find a committee, uh, usually consisting of three faculty members. One of those faculty members would be the lead faculty member that you would meet with. Um, I, again, certainly your option, but I think most students opt for directed research, which is another option that, again, I think is the more popular option. I think students that want to pursue thesis typically have the inkling to pursue a PhD, and I don't want students to think that that is just the path to go through. If I go through a PhD, you can also take directed research as well, which again is the more popular path. Great. Yeah, that's really insightful. Um, and I mean, that's another leads to me to my other question too that we get a lot is, you know, how like if I if somebody wants to do director research, like how does that process work? Yeah, so directed research is essentially an autonomous process whereby students have to seek out faculty. Uh, they have to, they, I think most students look on our homepage, they look at the faculty's research, they say, hey, that's an area of interest for me. Uh, they schedule an appointment with the faculty and they just ask, hey, would you mind me being part of your research group? And so students can take, it, you know, research is actually a variable amount of units in all of our programs. 
And so students can take one, two, three, four units of research of any particular term. Obviously, the more units, the more work that is required of you. And so, um, yeah, so basically you kind of have an agreement with the instructor and these are the guidelines, which may be like uh, biweekly submissions of this is what we did in the lab today. Um, but it's, it's actually graded on a credit, no credit basis at the graduate level, whereas undergraduate level at USC, it's actually a letter grade. So that's another difference. But again, directed research is a great way to um, connect with faculty and um, maybe another way of networking as well. Great. That's really helpful. Um, and I think another question that we tend to get is, um, you know, if somebody has graduate credit from another institution, you know, how does that transfer process work? Yeah, so there is a potential for you to transfer in graduate credit from a, an institution. I will say the rules, there are a lot of them. So okay. please try to follow. So. Um, the university standard is they accept up to 25% of graduate transfer of the program requirement units. I tell you, Viterbi is a little stingy in that department, and especially our department, we allow up to four units. So it's definitely less than, you know, what the university standard is. And uh, I don't know what the reason is behind that, but again, we allow up to four units. And so the additional rules that come with that is. That graduate core, that graduate credit that you took at another institution, first off, it has to be deemed applicable to one of our programs. And then two, you could not have used that for, let's say, your undergraduate degree or another program. So it basically has to be in a course that you took, essentially knowing that you could potentially transfer it into a graduate program. And so again, it's it's kind of a very antiquated process. And if we ever get there, I'm more than happy to walk you through it because there are a number of steps along the way. But uh, again, just know that you can get up to four units. Great, well, that's really helpful. Um, okay, so I don't think we have any questions from this group, a little bit more of a shy group, but that's okay. Um, if you have any questions after this session, um, oh, we got one here. Let's see. Perfect. So um, it says, thank you for providing an overview of our MS online programs. Has USC considered offering an MS program in system safety engineering or safety engineering with a virtual option? If not, how can that be advocated for? Interesting. Would you be able to touch upon that, David, at all? So, Sigis, that is a great question, and that is way above my pay grade. <laughs> that is at the faculty level. So, unfortunately, we, you know, again, we're we're on the staff end, and I think your question is more directed toward the faculty. And so, when it comes to creating programs, whether it's online or on campus, that is definitely at the faculty level. And there's a number of approvals that have to happen along the way. So, um, I, I don't know if that's in the works. Yeah, I mean, I think like in terms of how they um, consider offering that too. I mean, I think that I've heard, you know, interest in system safety for like courses so that I could see that maybe being a possibility in the future. But yeah, I mean, it, but, you know, as a student, I think if, if somebody wanted to advocate, you know, I think that's, you know, we love to hear kind of what students want to. So, you know, as a student, you know, if there's certain courses or areas of interest that interest you, um, you know, there's no problem with, you know, speaking up about that, whether you're an online student or on campus student, um, just because, you know, that that's also insightful and helpful. Um, and we, we really appreciate, you know, um, any feedback that we get from students in, in terms of what areas of interest as well. So great question though. Thank you for that. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, as I was starting to say earlier, um, you are more than welcome to reach out to us after the session. So for those of you that are planning to pursue your program on campus, um, we have an, a, both an on-campus and Denim Viterbi team um, that are here to support you through the application process. So if you have any questions about the application, the program, the general areas of the program, um, we are able to help you out. Um, so you can email us 
for on campus, viterbi.grad admission at usc.edu, um, and then Dana Viterbi at usc.edu for those planning to pursue or kind of um, unsure about pursuing an online uh, a program online. Um, again, that goes to um, me as well as my colleague Marilyn Lau. Um, we always make it, make sure to answer within um, you know 24 hour period. The normal business days, you could also give us a call at that number and just ask for you can ask for <clears throat> me, Aaron Tanaka, or my colleague Marilyn Lau. You could also ask for um, somebody from the on campus team who um, works with um, you know prospective students if, if you're interested in that as well. Um, but it looks like we have one more question here. <clears throat> How accommodating are the online classes for employee sponsored students? What has been those students experiences? Um, <clears throat> so, I guess, um, I don't know if you have any insight on that, David, um, I can touch maybe a little bit on it too as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could just say, um, you know, having been in Turby and then coming back to the Turby before, I know our distance education network is typically one of the highly ranked um, online I don't know, vessels uh, across the nation. So as far as accommodating students, I think we're more than accommodating, but uh, yeah, I'll have Aaron talk a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I can touch on it too, perfect. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, how we, um, you know, work with um, those that have, you know, employee sponsored um, students, uh, you know, we work um, very closely with our Denver Turby, again, online support team um, to make sure that, you know, our students are um, one, you know, the faculty members are well aware that you are working professionals. Um, of course, it depends on the individual faculty member, you know, um, with regard to like flux ability on deadlines, uh, which I'm assuming you're kind of thinking or wondering about, um, you know, the, the, the deadlines uh, in terms of assignments and exams are supposed to be the same, right? Um, same dates there. Um, so you do need to keep up to speed with your homework and exams out of fairness. But that being said, you know, um, faculty members depends on the individual faculty um, maybe may take into consideration if, you know, some flexibility is needed if, um, you know, but well, all it really takes is asking, right? Asking and, you know, letting them know. Um, but I have heard from online students um, that, you know, faculty members have been really understanding oftentimes and accommodating, um, knowing that, you know, work, work life balance can be hard sometimes. So, you know, I, I think it's a case by case basis thing. Um, it's not necessarily across the board, but, you know, um, I, I do encourage you to always, you know, you know, build relationships with your faculty members. Do, um, you know, they have um, online, you know, um, Office hours, oftentimes, especially during the pandemic, you know, everyone had to be go, go online, right? So even though a faculty member may have set um, hours of, you know, that they say that they're on campus, you know, you might also, of course, you can, you know, reach out to them and and make, um, you know, appointments with them directly, um, whether you know online over the over the phone via Zoom, you know, whatever modality works best for both parties. Um, you definitely, you know, our our faculty members are very comedy in that in that sense and I've I've honestly I've never heard you know um, a student complain about a faculty member not you know being willing to to um, meet with them virtually um, and then you know in terms of the student experience you know while I I can't speak to the den of experience uh, myself you know because I'm not a den student and we do have actually a um, hundred and over 160 um, den of ambassadors these are current students and alumni who are happy to um, you know talk about their student experience with you um, we have what's called a den of unibuddy platform uh, essentially it's a way to chat with um, um, you know, current students and alumni about their experience, whether it's, you know, hey, how did you deal with, with like work life balance? You know, were the faculty members accommodating? Were they understanding? They're really your best resource, right? They're going to give you the, um, the answers and their experiences. Of course, every student has different experiences. But I think that's honestly one of the best ways to get an insight student perspective. And so I'm happy to share that link with you. And if you ever, you know, want to have a, you know, specific 
specific, you know, profile of somebody that is a current student or alumni that <clears throat> that you'd like to to chat with or connect with beyond even the Unibody platform, I'm happy to um to reach or connect with one of um with you um with one of our den ambassadors. So all you have to do is just email me. Um you can email me email me or my colleague Marilyn Lau at denoviturby.usc.edu and we're happy to connect with um you with um you know current students or alumni. Um and and yes, so I think that hopefully covers your question. Thanks so much for your question. That's a great one. Perfect. Well, I think that is it for this session. Um, thank you so much, David, um, for your time um, amongst your busy schedule. That was very insightful. Um, and thank you all that have attended us attended during this live session. Appreciate you staying on and um, we hope you found this session informative. Uh, but take care and um, we hope to hear from you soon. And as we say at USC, fight on everyone. Fight on. <laughs>